Schwarzenegger is back and he's brought Jamie Lee Curtis in the cult classic. True Lies is a run and gun action game as developed by Beam Software, published by Fuck Me LJN, that was released for the Super Nintendo in February 1995. The game that's based off the movie by James Cameron has a play controlling the main protagonist, Harry Tasker, fighting the terrorist group, the Crimson Jihad, through nine stages of difficulty with several weapons such as flamethrowers, Uzis, pistols, shotguns, and mines. Receiving mixed to poor ratings, Next Gen gave the toll a 2 out of 5 star rating, referring it to as monotonous, although EGM gave the game a 7 out of 10, praising it for its graphics and controls. Let's check it out. So this was the last title published by LJN before being siphoned and absorbed by Acclaim Entertainment. Thankfully the devs over at Beam Software made this game pretty decent. We begin at the Chateau where Harry's informed by Gibson, played by Tom Arnold, that we need to attach a modem to a computer or something along those lines. First impressions, I dig the music. The 16-bit graphics portrayed from a top-down perspective look nice and the controls, they're very solid. The game in general represents the movie quite well and the scenery looks to be taken straight from the movie. Good job developers. The gameplay itself, oh man, it is fast paced action. Decent variety of weapons with different animations and the blood and gore makes killing enemies so satisfying. The player uses the shoulder buttons to switch weapons and the SMG is my go to. You've also got the ability to command a roll to help evade bullets, nice little touch. The game also gives you several lives, medkits and plenty of ammunition which is a big one up on let's say Die Hard on the NES. Harry then spends the next 5 minutes decimating enemies. How many of these fuckers are there? We finally find the computer and attach the modem. Gibson then radios in to inform us that Harry needs to get out of the building. Yeah, easier said than done. Kill more enemies, sweep the area for medkits and ammunition, and head for the exit. Good job, Harry. After fleeing the chateau, our hero is then gunned down by more enemy skiers and snowmobiles. Which, if you remember the movie, Harry's on the move through the snow, trying to escape to Gibbs or Albert's van. Now, you'll want to try avoid shooting enemies. My advice, keep commando rolling down the slope. I mean, this segment's a bit mindless. It's alright. I was actually having a look at the instruction manual earlier, and you get yourself some nice illustrations. At this point, the game throws a frickin' helicopter at ya. Just ignore it and get to the bloody van. Mission success. Finally! We then end up in the shopping mall looking for Aziz, where Gibbs informs us we gotta bring him in alive. And don't shoot any civilians. I can't stress this enough. These morons, they tend to wander straight into your crossfire. It can be annoying. I will highlight the AI does slightly adapt to player movements, making it more of a challenge. Harry then kills another 20 or so members of the Jihad throughout the mall before entering the men's room. Boss battle time, but first, shoot the doors to stop the enemies from respawning, then take out the head honcho. Now is he challenging? Does he put up a fight? Well, he's definitely resilient. Jesus Christ, how many hits does this guy take? Just die! Yes! Mission completed. Nothing like destroying a restroom in the name of democracy. Behind the scenes, our hero chases down a Ziz via horseback. Harry then enters a park that looks like some sort of random maze. And you guessed it, more enemies of the Jihad. I'll say this, the game gets repetitive, fast, but at least the combat is still enjoyable. Not on this level though, there are at least, and I'm not making this up, 100 different enemies that are guarding gates. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see where this is going? The player's got to find three different keys that are scattered throughout the area, and son, you're gonna die a lot. This fat fucking cunt. Hey, <laughs> where the fuck's the fucking key? This fucking game is fucking shit. Fuck! It took me two hours to complete the stupid fetch quest. Once you finally unlock the last gate, boss battle. Use the shotgun, roll, shoot, and repeat. There ain't no health bar either, so it's a bloody guess how many hits he takes. Watch out for his bombs too. Another success. Albert then informs us that Aziz has disappeared. Well, what a surprise. 
Harry makes his way to the train station and is informed that there's a stronghold with computers that needs to be destroyed. So what do we do? We kill and kill some more. We then find a switch that needs a lever to stop the train. You may notice that the entrance is just across the tracks and that there's a gap in the train's moving cycle. Maybe we could jump it? No, it's a trick, you dickhead. The game then introduces the player to landmines and big bozos with flamethrowers. Piss off. We shoot this random wall to find another way in. But before you do that, grab the shotgun and extra life that's hidden very well. Something positive on the other hand, I actually enjoyed using the grenades and the gameplay has slightly changed. Our hero then command rolls past these clouds to locate the lever for the switch. We kill more jihad and make it back in one piece. As for the rest of the level, you kill, collect ammunition and find the stronghold. Takes about half an hour so be prepared. We enter and boss time baby, shoot the main computers. Sounds easy enough right? No, these assholes they will block you in. You're gonna die, die, die and die some more. The game does have friendly fire so try to use that to your advantage. 25 minutes later, objective complete. Further dialogue reveals that Harry heads to the docks. We're then informed that the terrorists are receiving a major arms shipment and we're gonna destroy the weapons crates or some shit. Yeah, guess how many? 12. Are you joking? I've just about had enough. Where's all the med kits? Three more hits and I'm dead. Oh. No! This has been my attempt at true lies on the Super Nintendo. Overall, a great shooter, but yes, can be frustrating. I can't tell you when, but this I can promise you. Sylvester Stallone and newcomer Wesley Snipes in Demolition Man on the Mega Drive. Da -da 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 -da.